Hello everyone, my name is Liam Sorter. I'm a developer evangelist here at Amazon. And today we're going to be adding our own custom content to the Fire App Builder project. If it's your first time hearing about the project, then check out the video on screen now to get started in just five minutes. Now to get started with adding your own content, we first need to understand the media feed. This is the feed that contains all of your content, meaning media URLs, titles, descriptions, and any other information associated with your content. With many media feeds having their own proprietary structure, the Fire App Builder instead queries your existing media feed, converting that result into a structure that's compatible with the Fire App Builder's content model. To start making these queries, we first need to load the media feed itself. It's important to note that there are actually two types of feed that we can load, open feeds and token-based feeds. We're going to be using the open feed for this video, though the steps are largely similar. You can check out the link on screen now for more information on token-based feeds. To start loading an open feed, we first need to open the URL file.json. This is located in app, then assets. If you have multiple feeds, you can separate them with a comma like this. Now that we have our media feed loaded, we need to configure two recipes for the Fire App Builder to use when pulling media categories and content from your feed. Recipes are just JSON files that contain settings in the form of key value pairs for the Fire App Builder project to use when building content. We'll first start with the categories recipe. As you can see here, we have a row of content under the heading Costa Rica Islands. Scrolling down, you'll see different videos for underwater, attractions, pretty much anything that you need to know about Costa Rica. To get this set up for your own content, the first thing we need to do is set up our own recipe files. Thankfully, we already have a few templates laid out for these, which you can find in app, assets, and then recipes. There are three main files that we want to customize for ourselves here. Those being category recipe, contents recipe, and the data loader recipe. First, let's copy and paste these over, replacing Lightcast with our own project name. I'm going to go with Fire TV Dev. Now let's open up the categories recipe.json file, and for the most part, you can leave these values as they are. The main thing that you want to check for here is the format, based on whether your content is coming in as XML or JSON. For more information, check out the link on screen now for our docs page covering each key in the file. Next up is the query parameter. This section does differ slightly though, based on the format of your feed. We're going to be covering JSON in this video, though we have included a walkthrough in our docs page for the XML feeds. Starting with the syntax, here's an example of what a query string looks like. Let's break this down. The dollar sign specifies the root directory as the beginning of the search. The two periods run a recursive search in every directory and subdirectory for the matches. We have categories, which has square brackets at the tail of it, says to look for any array named categories. And then finally, the wildcard, matching any and all contents inside of it. To play around with these strings, check out the JSON path evaluator tool linked on screen now. Using the query string from the sample lightcast content, we can see the very categories that we saw in our sample app. Now to wrap up the categories recipe, we'll go over the match list parameter. The match list selects specific properties from the category query result and then maps them to the Fire App Builder content model. Taking a close look at the syntax, we have an at symbol in the center. With the property what we want to target, in this case, string key, which targets a list of strings on the left side and the Fire App Builder element we want to map it to on the right side. We also have a key data type parameter, which decides how our items are grouped within certain categories. This parameter is also used later on as part of our contents recipe. Since our query result is a list of strings, we can simply keep the default key value pair as it is. If we had a more complex structure like this, then we need to include the container's path as part of the key data types value like this. With the categories recipe wrapped up, let's move on to the contents recipe. Start by going into app, assets, recipes, and then contents recipe.json. Once again, we have a set of options here that we can configure based on the feed that we're reading from. 
The main thing that you'll notice is the query looks a bit more complex and the match list is more specific to our content. Like the category query parameter, this process is a little different based on whether your feed is coming in as JSON or XML. Since we're going to be using JSON, check out the link on screen now for our docs page on the XML setup. To better understand how the data is passed, let's look at this example feed. If we plug this into the JSON evaluator tool with the following query, we'll get the first entry of our content in the Costa Rica Islands category. The main difference that you'll notice is rather than explicitly stating the category, we pass in dollar dollar par zero dollar dollar. Now this isn't the catchiest category name, but it is a custom variable that we have defined in the fire app builder, which is populated from the categories recipe. Check out our docs page for even more information on how you can use query parameters for filtering content. It's also important to note that the fire app builder needs to process results from queries as a hash map. If you return an object already, you don't need to worry about this. Otherwise, if you're going to return a list of strings, remember to include the following parameter in your recipe. Finally, to wrap up our contents recipe, let's go over the match list. Just like the categories recipe, we have an at symbol in the center, though this time it's the data we're trying to grab from the query on the left side and the Fire App Builder project element you're trying to set it to, once again, on the right side. You can see that we can actually reuse content within the same match list, like we're doing here to use the image for both our card's thumbnail and background image. This is all of the required information you'll need to set up your card, but for a full list of elements, check out the link on screen now. Now, before we wrap up, we do need to swap out some placeholder code to avoid running into a service unavailable error due to trying to process a feed URL configured for the Lightcast elements rather than the ones that we just customized. To do this, open up the navigator.json file in app and then assets and delete this section here. We then need to rename the categories and contents recipes to the ones that we named ourselves. So in my case, that's going to be Fire TV Dev. And with that, you have now officially configured your custom content to run on Fire TV. From here, you can follow along our docs and start customizing the visual aspects of the app, or even look at adding more complex functionality. Check out the documentation page on the Fire App Builder project for all the details. If you have any questions on Fire TV development and would like to know more, feel free to reach out to us at firetvdev-eu at amazon.com. We would love to hear what you're working on. Thanks for watching.